right, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab them and turn with me once again to Isaiah chapter 66. Uh, that's going to be our starting point this morning. We're going to jump around a good bit, which is uh, different than what we normally do. We have been uh, working our way through the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to take a, a small break this morning for Mother's Day, and we'll get back to it. Um, but uh, that is our primary way of working our way through the Word of God. But get your fingers ready. We're going to look at uh, different texts of Scripture this morning. Uh, and as we do, let's just uh, have a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessing on our time in His Word. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we come with thankful hearts, thankful for who you are. Lord, our hope and our comfort and our strength are in you and in you alone. And Lord, we have gathered into this place in, in your presence, and we thank you for uh, your, your mercy and your love and your grace. Lord, as we come, we acknowledge that we do not deserve this privilege to be able to call on your name, to hear from your word, to know you at all. Lord, because of our sin, we deserve nothing but death and hell. But you and your love have given your own son to pay the penalty for our sin. And we give you thanks this morning. And for this day that's set aside to honor mothers, Lord, we want to do that. Lord, we want to um, give honor where honor is due and obey the commands of your word. Lord, forgive us for where we have uh, failed in this way. Uh, Lord, in, in every way, as we have sinned against you in word and thought and deed. We're thankful for the finished work of Christ this morning. Lord, as we come to this portion where we look to your word, we ask that you would be at work in our hearts and minds. Lord, may you tear down strongholds. May you soften hearts to the word and to your gospel. And Lord, may you comfort and give grace where it's needed. You know each heart. You know each mind. None of it is hidden from you. And I pray that you would be at work this morning in spite of me for your glory and for the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray as the gospel was proclaimed here, and not only here, but, Lord, all over the world today, that your kingdom would advance, and that we would see many who come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, as, as I think about uh, moms and Mother's Day, there are, there are certain things, certain sayings um, that they, they're closely tied to moms, right? Things that moms say. For my mom, uh, she's back there, but for my mom, the thing that I always remember her saying was this, you are getting on my... Yeah, some of you said it, right? It was not your nerves, right? It was her last nerve. It was always her last one. And I, I managed to find that one every single time. Uh, you know, my mom raised three boys, and it's amazing any of us are here uh, today, I just it, you know, it's by the grace of God, and and so I'm I'm thankful for my mom, uh, and and I, I'm amazed she has any nerves left. But uh, you know, some of those things, yeah. You know, if if you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. Right? Some of you have heard that. Right? Now say you're sorry, and mean it. <laughs> right. You uh, you will eat it, and you will like it. <laughs> I hope someday you have children just like you. <laughs> right. Right. Because I said so. That's why. Right. Those are things we often, if you, um, I think it was a, a month or so ago, we went to see Tim Hawkins. He was talking about his mom, and uh, one of the things that she said, it, I, I don't do it as well as he does, but anyway, you know, you, you, so it's funny how they progress sometimes, right? Mom will say, I have had Enough, which never means that she's had quite enough. So then it's, I have had about enough. <laughs> and then I have had just about enough. <laughs> to finally, it's just enough. <laughs> and then you know, that's the end. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting that we need a day. We, we, we set, it's really a shame, isn't it? We have to set aside a day to do what God has commanded us in his word. Yeah. God has said, you shall honor your father and your mother. And this is right. right? It, it, it's, a, it's a command that God has given us. And so it's not wrong for us to set this day aside, but it is a shame that we need it. Uh, and, and, and so today we want to do just that. We want to give honor where honor is due. We want to honor our mothers in every way. And, and I, I want to remind you, that there's no qualification stipulations on that. Right? Everybody has different feelings uh, about their, their home life, but 
The Bible just says honor your mother. It doesn't matter what she's like. It doesn't matter who she is. It doesn't matter whether she's a believer or an unbeliever. You honor your mother because it's right. Because God has said so. And, and I, I know as we come to this day that um, there's a lot of different feelings. It's hard for me to prepare for a service like that, knowing that for some it's sweet, you know, uh, for some it's a bitter day. And, and so I, I have, as a pastor, I have all of these different things going through my heart and mind. Uh, and there's no way that I can address every single thing that's going through um, the, different, you know, the different circumstances that we're facing this morning. Uh, there's a lot of different feelings in, in this sanctuary today, and I know that. Uh, and I'd love to be able, in fact, as a pastor, what I'd love to do is just be able to sit down with you with the Word of God and pray with you and walk through some of those things that you're facing and you're struggling with today. Um, but for this morning, we want to look to the Word of God. You know, there, <laughs> we were watching that movie, The American Gospel, a few weeks ago. And uh, if you haven't seen it, still recommend it. We're going to have another showing of it. I have some copies available that you can check out. Um, it is worth the investment in the time. But a uh, pastor from Capitol Hill Baptist, Mark Dever, during the, during the documentary, he says this. He says, I think the gospel should be preached in every sermon. If I've got somebody here today that I've been trying to get here for three years, and the guy preaching is just talking about the joys of motherhood, you know I'm in favor of motherhood, but if that's all this visitor I bring here, that's just a shame. And that's the truth. If all we talk about is motherhood today, then we've really missed the point. You know, we don't want to miss that... The reason why we have gathered here today is because we have a Savior. We have a God who made us, who loves us, and, and who wants to know us. And so we want to, we wanna, this morning, we want to think about motherhood, but I want to do so by comparing, comparing the characteristics of a mother to God himself. And, and while I do that, I want to be really careful, because right, I, I, I'm not suggesting in any way that God is a mother, or that we should relate to him as a mother, right? God has revealed himself in masculine terms in the scriptures, right? He has told us to pray to him as our heavenly father. However, God does describe himself in the scriptures at different places, right, with both masculine and feminine terms. And, and you know, in that feminine energy, what, imagery, what is he doing? He's just, he's conveying his, his heart, his character, right? his care and his nurture and his love for his people. And so when we see that, and we saw that in our scripture meditation, right? Isaiah 66, verse 13, this is our jump off point. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. So God here is saying what? To us this morning, I will comfort you the way that a mother comforts her children. And even in the context here, he, that, that comfort comes through his people. You know, I know that for some, today is so difficult that they couldn't get out of bed this morning. For some, there are some who are normally here that are not here because today is a hard day. And, and I want to say this, I believe those days that are the most difficult, those days where you do not feel like getting up and, and gathering with the people of God are the exact days that you need to force yourself to be here. I know that's not easy to hear, but that's when, you need, that's, what, that's when you need to hear the word of God most, and that's when you need the people of God the most. So, you know, not just today, but other days in, in the course of time, you're going to have those moments where you feel the weight of the world, and you feel like, I just don't feel like singing, and I don't feel like worshiping, and I don't feel like looking at people. And on those days, you need to say, you know what, I don't feel like it, but this is what I need more than anything else. And I believe you'll be encouraged by that. So this morning, we come and, and, and we, we look at God and his character. And again, through, through the characteristics of a mother, I want to look at the character of God this morning. You know, and, and so we're just going to walk through a few of these together. The very first one I think of when I think about the character of a mother is, is protection. That begins very early, right? Really, even you know, safest place in the world, right? It should be a, a mother's womb, but... As, as they, uh, yeah, little, I, we have a lot of little ones running around here. 
And I love little ones. I love to talk to little ones. I love to, you know, kind of joke with them. But you know what? A lot of them, when I talk to them, you know what they do? They grab their mom's leg and they hide. (laughs) That's where they feel safe. That's where they feel protected. You know, if they're in their mom's arms, right, they'll just turn their head and bury, bury their head in mom's chest and like, I don't, I don't want anybody else but her. And so there's a, there's a certain sense of safety that, that is found in the arms of a mother. Right. Well, that same thing is true of God himself, is it not? God has said, right, Jesus said in, in Luke 13, verse 34, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. What's he saying there? I, I wanted to protect you. I wanted to shelter you under my wings. And this imagery is not foreign to the scriptures at all. <laughs> Psalm 57, verse 1, David writes, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. See, David is saying what? Yes, I can find care. I can find comfort. I can find shelter and safety in the arms of my God. And so this morning, that may be your need. You're feeling the weight of the world. You're feeling like, I just, I wish I could just wrap my arms around my mom's leg and hide. And, and, And today, I would say to you, shelter yourself under the wings of a loving God. Find safety, find security in him. The second thing I think of when I think of, uh, of a mother and her characteristics is, is nourishment and satisfaction. Right? You know, that it, uh, particularly a, a, a newborn baby, a nursing child, they are wholly dependent for life on their mother, are they not? Right. With, a, apart from that, and I know, you know you can give them a bottle, but when you just think of that picture of a nursing mother, you know, that, that life, that, and, and you've heard, right, when a baby's hungry and they need to eat, you know it, right? They let everybody know it. And, and, and then the peace and the tranquility and the quiet when they finally get what they've been craving, what they've been longing for. So there's a picture that we see there that I, I want to I point you to a God not only who shelters and protects, but to a God who satisfies our longing heart. A God who provides nourishment. A God who provides life. Right? We see that imagery in Isaiah 66, where I had you turn, right? That you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. That you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and you shall be carried upon her hip and bounced upon her knees. That that imagery there is of a God who is satisfying his people. Jesus said, John chapter four, John chapter four and verse 14, he said, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. That that water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. So, yes, protection, safety, guarding, but also life itself, where you're going to find spiritual health and spiritual life is in Jesus Christ. And not only life, but satisfaction, this God is able to satisfy your longing heart. And, and I know as I look out over this place this morning, some of you have been looking for, longing for satisfaction somewhere, anywhere. Right? And so you've chased down in this world many different things. And the word of God to you this morning would be that satisfaction is only going to be found in Christ. So when you think of a nursing child and the, and the way in which they're satisfied, then, then take that imagery and say, you know what? The way that they can be satisfied in their mother is the way that I can be satisfied in this God. He can give me 
what I'm looking for. He can give me what I'm longing for. I know one of the things that we uh, often associate with motherhood, and, and rightly so, is, is wisdom and teaching and instruction. You know, uh, from our earliest days, we have grown in knowledge and wisdom at the feet of our mothers. Right? It's there where we learn, right? First things, Proverbs 31, 26, says she opens her mouth with wisdom. And so that's true for, for us academically uh, and spiritually. Right? It, is, it is from our mothers that we first learn right? we, you know, our you know, first words and you know, our ABCs and all of the, you know, the books that your mom has read to you, all of those things leading to a life of learning and instruction. And then as the girl sang a little while ago, she's the one who taught me about Jesus. For many of you, that's true today. Many of you can say, my mom's the one who told me. She's the one who shared with me the gospel of Jesus Christ. She's the one who modeled and showed me what that looks like. And so we see that teaching and that instruction. And I would say to you as mothers and parents today, that is the most important thing you can do for your children is impart to them the truth of the word of God. And model for them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing more important. There's, the, there's a, a little meme that I've seen bouncing around the internet. He says, my, my job as a mom is not first and foremost to get my kid into Harvard. It's to get my kid to heaven. Now, I know that you can't do anything, you know. But we want to model for them the gospel. And we want to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ over and over and over again. And that's more important than any earthly attainment. And so we're reminded of that truth this morning. But at the same time, we have a picture in the scriptures of a God, a God who knows, an omniscient God, right? And he, he knows all things, and in him is hidden wisdom and truth, right? Colossians 2, 3, speaking of Jesus Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I know we're, you know, just write notes, jot down, follow along. We're we're hitting these scriptures fast, but don't miss that every single one of them is pointing to this great God and and to to, to Jesus Christ in whom we find true wisdom, true instruction. In 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 3, it says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. God has given us all that we need for life. Right? Now that primarily has come in the form of this word. Right? He is, he's unfolded for us who he is and who we are and how we need to live in light of who he is. Right? So in his book, he has given us what we need. And then in Christ, we lack nothing. And when we come to Christ, we have his spirit and there is, he's given us all. Right? We've talked about this in Ephesians, right? He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. There is nothing that we lack this morning in Christ. And so we have a picture of a God who, who knows. Right? And this morning, maybe some of you are here and you're, you're questioning and you're, you're wondering. You're like, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to handle this situation. And I know it's closely tied with what we're talking about here from the teaching and instruction standpoint, but... One of the things that I think about when I think about a mother is, is the guidance they often provide in life. And I know it's something that many of you cherish deeply. Right? That, that just the idea of, wonder what mom would think about that. Right? Some of you, you know, WWMD, what would mom do? Right? And, and so you kind of operate in that mindset at times. I know that I just heard over the time, uh, you know, some of some of you have grown up and you're out of the house now, and you're like, man, I, I call my mom all the time. Yeah, you know, I'm always asking her this, and I'm always asking, and then others are like, man, I just wish I could call my mom up today. I understand that. I understand the the desire for for direction and for for guidance, and 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 I say that not to bring up you know, a void or in or a hole but just to say that that hole and that void is found in God himself. 
the guidance that you need, that you're looking for, you can find in him. Proverbs chapter 3 and and verse 5 says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Yeah, these are familiar scriptures. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and, and does not hold back. Right? That's the, that's the picture there in James 1, 5. It's one of those verses that I run to, I would say, almost daily. And, and, and the reason I bring that up this morning is that if you're in need of direction and, and guidance, then God offers it to you today. We have a God who says, look to me, trust in me, lean on me. You know, wisdom is just the application of knowledge. And there are times where we just need to know, I, I need help. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. And I would say to you today, look to this God. The primary, the primary characteristic that our passage from Isaiah points to, and it's certainly one that is, when you think of a mother, this is what you think of, right? Isaiah 66, again, verse 13, is one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. The comfort of a mother is, is something that, man, it transcends time, does it not? When you think of a mom, <laughs> the other day, my son, he's outside playing in the yard, and suddenly you hear wild screaming. <laughs> All right, I, I, w- I was in the house, and a- Amy was working on something, and I mean, just blood-curdling scream. Like, oh my goodness, we're going to the emergency room. He walks through the door, and he has, he has <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds, <laughs> He has blood dripping down his knees. He had fell on the sidewalk, scraped his knees, and there was blood just pouring down the front of his legs. And uh, he's, he's crying, and I come out, and, and I'm like, okay, mom's busy. She's got stuff going on. So dad grabs him, scoops him up, and I'm going to just take him and clean him up and dress his wounds. And when I pick him up, he looks at me through his cry and says, yes, take me to my mom. <laughs> What am I? <laughs> there's just something about mom, isn't there? They, they, there's a comfort that is found in a mother. And, and, and God wants us to experience that same comfort in him. You know, second, second Corinthians chapter 1 describes God as the God of all comfort. All comfort. And so when I say that this morning, that means that there is nothing that you're facing, no circumstance, no trial, no storm that is on your doorstep in which you cannot find comfort in God. You know, the, the Apostle Paul, later on in that same book, as he describes God as a God of all comfort, in chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, he writes this, So to keep me from becoming conceited, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. Paul was in a place where he's saying, Lord, take this away from me. I need your help. I need your comfort. Three times, again and again, going back to God and saying, Lord, I can't handle this. Some, some, we don't know exactly what that thorn is, and we can speculate, and we can guess. But a thorn in the flesh, and he's just saying it hurts, and it's painful. Lord, would you remove it? You know, some of you are saying three times is nothing. How long have I asked God to remove this? How long have I asked him to take away the pain, to meet the desire of my heart? Again and again, I have pled with him and asked him, and it seems like he's, it seems like he's not saying anything. Do you remember what, you remember what the Lord said to the Apostle Paul? And Paul said, take this away. Remove it, remove it. 
And in verse 9, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, <coughs> insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, God didn't take it away. He didn't remove it, but he did say, Paul, I'll give you grace. I'll give you grace to go through this. And when you are weak, then my strength is going to, made, it's going to be made perfect in, in you. And so this morning, you know, if you're here and you're struggling and you're hurting, we have a God today in which you can find comfort in. He would say to you, it, 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 there's grace for that. There's grace for that. There are some of you here this morning who are, you long to be a mother. You long to be a mother. And you can't. Whether that be because of infertility or maybe miscarriage. And it's something you, it's just the desire of your heart. And you've asked God and you've pled with him. And he would say to you this morning, there's grace for you. There's grace for you. There are some of you here this morning who your, your mother has went off into eternity and there's a hole in your heart. And God would say to you today, there is grace for you. There's grace for you. Some of you here today, your, your hole is because it's your child just went off into eternity. And God would say there is grace for you today. Find, find comfort, find strength in me for for some, it's a strained and broken relationships and homes this morning. Whether it be you know, a wayward child who's not walking in, 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 not walking in line with the family, certainly not walking in line with the Lord, and your heart as a mother is just broken. Maybe it's a situation where your your family is broken. And your mom and dad are not together. And, and in those situations, and in those circumstances, today, God would say to you, I have grace for you. I have grace for you. You can find comfort. You know, of all the things, characteristic-wise, when you think of a mom, it's the love of a mother that stands out, is it not? You've, you've heard that saying. A face only a mother could love, <laughs> right? <laughs> that kind of love is the kind of love that God has displayed towards us. Yeah, a mother's love is unconditional. A mother's love is, is, is there even, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, right? They love you no matter what. And, and, and I just want to remind you that that motherly love gives us a glimpse of the love that God has for us. In Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting. Eternity past to eternity future. I have set my love. I've set my affection on you. You know, a face only a mother could love is a good description, an apt description of the way in which God loves us. Because without Jesus Christ, we're not very lovable. In fact, the description of us apart from Christ, he says what, our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. That Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners... You could really translate that while we were still sinning, <laughs> rebelling against God, despising his word, despising his people, having no care, no concern for him. And yet he loved us. How much did he love us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
See, God looked at you in your sin. He looked at you in your rebellion and your disobedience and your lack of care and your lack of concern, of concern for him and for his word. And he said, I love you. And because of our sin, we don't deserve God's love. We deserve God's wrath. That's what we deserve. We deserve death and we deserve hell. Right? That's, what, that's what the Bible tells us. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Right? We deserve physical death. We deserve spiritual death to be separated from God for all eternity in hell. That's what we deserve. I deserve that and so do you. But God, who is rich in mercy, right? Whose love abounds toward us. He gave his son and Jesus Christ on the cross took the penalty that you and I deserve. He bore the wrath that was rightfully ours. He died on the cross in our place. Greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friend. See, it was on the cross that God showed his deepest love for you. There's, there's nothing quite like the love of a mother. And yet God's love is greater. The love of a mother is meant to point us to the love of God today. And, and it's my prayer that you would know that and you would experience that for yourself. The sad reality is there are some of you here today you know about God, but you've not experienced his love. You've walked in sin. You've walked in rebellion. You've walked you know, not caring about who he is, not caring about what his word says. And yet today he's calling you in spite of your, in spite of your sin. He's saying, I love you. I want you to come to me. I want you to trust in me. And today that would be, that's what you need above anything else. There are some of you who are only here today because your mom wanted you here. You have a heart, a, a mother's heart, who wants and longs for you to be right with God. And they're like, honey, would you, just, would you just come to church with me today? And the reason you're here, that reflection of a mom's heart for you, is a reflection of God's heart for you. Who would say, I love you. Would you trust in me? Now, now, believing and trusting in him is not just a simple light thing. To believe and trust in him is to turn away from your sin. Right? It's called repentance. Right? I'm, I'm, I recognize that my life is not what it should be. I recognize that I have sinned, and I want to turn away from that life, and I want to turn away from that sin, and I want to trust in Jesus Christ. I want to believe in him, and I want to follow him. For some of you, that's your greatest need. It's the greatest thing that you could experience today is life in Christ, right? right? This God provides life, satisfying life, nourishing life. And if you would just humble yourself and bow before him, you could experience <laughs> this wellspring of life that ever satisfies. I would say this to you today, if, if you're here and you're in need of comfort, you have a God you can run to. If you're here this morning and you need direction, you can call on him. If you're here today and, and you're looking for satisfaction and, and contentment, drink deeply from the wellspring of life today. Say, I'm not sure how to do that. Well, a good way to start is just to pray. And, and normally we will sing as we close, but here in a moment we're going to just pray. I'm just going to have a moment of, of quiet where you can talk to the Lord. And you can call on his name. Perhaps you need to call on him for salvation. Perhaps you need to ask him to give you grace and help and strength. Maybe you need wisdom and direction this morning. You know, one of the things that stand out to me as, I, as I've looked at this this week, the characteristics that we, that we see here this morning, they reflect the heart of God. And in and, and, and reflecting the heart of God, then it, it tells us that what? These are things that should be reflected in our lives. Right? Ephesians 5 1 says, be imitators of me. Right? So when we see the, the love and the comfort and, and the, the protection, then 
as the people of God, we should ref- not just mothers, but all of us should reflect this character. It should be the desire of our heart as his people to defend the poor and the needy. It should be the desire of our heart to provide direction. You say, I can't provide direction for it. Yes, you have it right in your hands. We need to invest in the lives of others with his word. And certainly show God's love and God's care and God's comfort to people who desperately need it. We're going to close in prayer. Uh, I'm going to be, just make myself available after the service if I can be of help to you in any way, particularly if you have a need of salvation. I'd encourage you to come see me. Uh, But as we pray, just quietly, this is an opportunity for you to talk to the Lord, maybe for some of you, for the first time in a while. And so I'd encourage you, just humbly go before his throne and call upon his name. Let's pray.